Hello, how are you all? I am Dr. Labis from Dr. Labib Academy. Welcome you all to my channel. I kindly request you to subscribe this channel, share this channel with the people who are, are planning to write ACC examination. Watch till the end. Okay, this is ACCA, ACCA Financial Management. Okay, ACCA Financial Management. We are covering what we are. We have we have not completed. Okay business finance is it right and cost of capital this is section a i am following i am following cap plan okay i am following cap plan it is section a uh, this is uh, it is in series of eight okay this is series of the most important thing is this one okay we i why i am doing this is I'm doing is only to make sure that you should follow the sequence. You should not get uh, confused while following the things. Okay, this is with respect to business finance and cost of capital. We have done till one zero five. Here we are doing till last. Is it this is one zero six? Fine. Now we will start it. Please subscribe to my channel, share this channel, and and we have to reach to as many people as possible. So that every should get benefit and they should succeed. Okay, thank you so much. Coming back to this, the security. Uh, this is with respect to business finance. Uh, a security required return can be predicted by cap M. Okay, what, using the formula. What is the formula? Formula is this one. What is it? What is the cap M? Cap M is like this. Okay, this is the graph. Fine. This is on the right hand side, on the x axis it is risk, on y axis it is returns, okay? And we have one RF, risk free rate. That is the reason, it starts with RF. Is that means you will have the minimum. Now what happens if risk is increasing, automatically we assume and presume that the returns will also increase. Security, they are given three things, security X, Y, Z. They have given the beta is nothing but what the variation of the stock returns with the market returns okay variation of the stock returns with the market returns. they have given uh, for x 1.6 and 12 this is rid r okay this is beta uh, for y uh, 0.9 and 13 for z 1.2 and 13 they have given uh, they said that security z is correctly priced means they are relying on security z they are don't have that much clarity with respect to security x and y the risk free rate is six percent which of the which what does this information indicates about pricing of securities x and y fill the gaps in the statement okay fill the gaps in the state where security x is uh, security y whether it is underpriced or it is overpriced fine very simple very very slowly you do don't rush okay first we will take security z rf plus beta into rm minus rf we don't know rm okay we don't know we have r we have beta we have rf okay we don't know rm now how much is the security uh, R? R is how much? 13.2 is equal to 6 plus what is the beta of 1.2? Uh, we don't know RM, okay? We have 6%. From this we will calculate R, okay? RM, okay? 13.2 minus 6 okay 13.2 minus 6 equal to we are taking 6 on this side okay uh, on this uh, minus 6 plus equal to 1.2 rm minus 6 percent okay 13.2 means it comes to 7.2 okay 7.2 we take 1.2 on the left hand side it comes to 1.2 okay you take 6 on the left hand side it will become 6 plus 6 equal to rm then rm equal to how much 6 plus 6 equal to 12 this is rm 
now you have all the things. You have RF. RF is six percent. Beta is there for everything. RM is how much? RM is twelve percent. Beta is is unique for every other thing. Now calculate for uh, we have for x is how much? For x we have calculated for z we have calculated thirteen point two. Okay, it is correctly priced. Now calculate for x. How much is the uh, uh, risk-free? Six percent. Beta is one point six, and uh, it is how much? It is twelve. Uh, uh, twelve. This twelve we are taking. Okay, this twelve we are taking. Okay, this twelve we are taking. This is this is equal to R M. Oh, don't say okay. This twelve we are taking here. Minus six. It comes to how much? Six plus one point six into six equal to six plus uh, uh, how much it will come? One point one point six times six. It comes to nine point six. Fifteen point six percent. Okay. Regarding y, six uh, percent risk free. Six percent beta is how much? Beta is zero point nine twelve minus six. Okay, six plus zero point nine into six. Six plus five point four. It comes to eleven point four. Z is thirteen. Is it? Y is b, b, y is b less than Z. Okay, how much? Eleven point four percent. X is above Z. Is it how much? Fifteen point six. Because see, it is now comparing to this. This is overpriced. X is overpriced, and uh, and and the y z to y is underpriced. X is x is overpriced, and y is under. Okay, next one. Please subscribe to this channel. I will post on a regular basis uh, the things as it progresses. What they say: the following are the extracts of the financial position. They gave equity, they gave bonds, NCL, non-current liabilities. Incidentally, they gave non-current preferences. They have classified in non-current liabilities. It is otherwise called as a debt also. Okay, current liabilities. The following ordinary shares is fifty cents. The selling price. See that this is what it says. This is the market price. The preference shares have a nominal value of one, and this is also what this is the market price. The bonds have a nominal value of one, and trading what how much? One zero five. Is it right? One zero five by hundred. It comes to one point zero five. Okay. We it is you. It is easy for us to. They are saying that what is the market based gearing? Gearing is nothing but debt divided by equity or NCL divided by equity. We have to calculate market prices. Okay. We have to calculate market prices. First, we have to calculate market price for the equity. Okay, market price for the equity. How much is there? Eight thousand value. Uh, each share is how much? Zero point five. It comes to sixteen thousand shares. Yen will be sixteen thousand. Value of one share is five. Equity is how much? Equity will be eighty thousand. Then you take bonds, okay? Bonds. How much is the bonds? Four hundred. What is the one zero five? Okay, one point zero five. We have done the. It comes to how much? It comes to four thousand two hundred. Then you take bank loans. Is it bank loans? Is nothing is there? Six thousand. No information is given. You will say preference shares. Is it right? We have to say preference shares. Preference shares are. Two thousands times zero point eight eighty cents. Okay, it comes to one thousand six hundred. 
if you take it comes to how much 12,000 gearing debt divided by equity or NCL divided by equity NCL we are taking depending on the situation okay 12,000 divided by 80,000 it comes to 0 0.15 or 15% Answer is what? Answer is 15%. Fill in the gaps with the following statement. Risk that cannot be diversified can be described as risk that increases as the gear up is de described as. See, see this is what it says. Again, see this is the graph. You have to you have to be very clear on this. Is it right? here on the x axis we are talking something with respect to portfolio the portfolio the more you diversify is it the more we diversify is it a diversify diversification is increasing what will happen risk will decrease <coughs> here we are talking on the x axis we take assets and on the y axis we take risk and we will take the, the same thing, we will take RF, RF is the, RF is the minimum CAPM model, risk free rate. This RF is otherwise called as a market risk. This RF is called as a systematic risk. This RF is called as a non-diversifiable risk. See, you take one. 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, If you are investing in only one type of asset, the risk is very very high. The more you diversify, the risk will decrease. There you are, you are, you are investing in only an oil industry. You are, all your uh, resources in one type of stock, risk is very high. You invest in oil industry, you invest in banking industry, risk will decrease. You invest in airline industry, risk is further will decrease. You, is, uh, you invest in automobile industry, it will decrease. You, you diversify the thing, the risk will decrease. This is right, this is what it says. This is a system, but what the rule says that risk cannot be zero. You can only minimize the risk, okay? We can only minimize, we cannot make risk zero. Nobody in the world can say that we can make risk zero. Is that risk cannot be diversified, non-diversifiable. Is called uh, which type of risk? Is called as a systematic risk. We will cover this in so many different, different, till the end we will cover this. Is it right? Risk that increases as gear. See, when debt increases, when gearing increases, what will happen? Financial risk will also increase. Is it right? Financial also increase. Next. All equity firm issues some irredeemable loans to finance a project that has the same risk as existing projects. Means there is a one, there is there is there is a there is one all equity. Okay, there is one all equity. They want to make debt and equity. Okay, they want to make debt and equity. If the company operates in a tax-free environment under the company under the com of capital markets, is it? Uh, what is the validity of the following statement? If I am right, we have done something on 104 in one in 104 question. Is it right? We have a tax-free environment. Is it right? Assume uh, with respect to this. Okay, this is option one. Is it? This is option one. This is option two, and this is option three. Is it right? This is option. Uh, we'll say that what is the validity? We'll say debt and equity. Assume debt is here, the debt is 40 and equity is 60. Here the debt is 70, equity is 30. We'll take a basic assumptions, okay? We'll take the basic assumptions as 
profit before interest and tax take it as 1000 okay we will take a uh, rate of interest 10 percent okay we will take a uh, tax it takes 20 percent okay how it will work profit before interest and tax 1000 okay in all the cases in all the cases 1000 you have the interest how much 10 percent if here there is no interest here the interest is if you take 10% uh, it is 4 okay if you take interest it is going to be 7 is it right now 1996 and 993 okay this is profit before tax you take tax as uh, you assume tax okay how much 20% if you take tax 20% 200 1996 times 20 it comes to how much 199.2 is it 993 times 20 it comes to 198.6 you will get profit after tax you will get profit after tax over how much 800 here how much you will get 996 minus 199.2 it comes to how much 796.8 this is the example which I am giving to support the arguments, okay? This is the example. This is very, very important example. Keep it in mind. Very, very important. You will find uh, these examples very rarely in the books, okay? This, this type, very rarely. 993 minus 198.6. How much? 7. 794.4 this is profit what is the eps eps is uh, n uh, profit after taxes divided by n 800 divided by what is here 100 is it is 100 okay it is how much eps is 8 okay number 796.7 796 7, 796.8 divided by uh, equity is how much 60 okay how much is there 13.2 is it a next uh, 794 794.4 divided by divided by 30 equity is how much 30 see the thing how much is there 26.4 as as the as the debt increases is it right as the debt increasing this is what it says as the debt increases what will happen the e earning per share will also increases if earning per share is increasing definitely it will have impact on cost of equity also is it right the, the cost of equity will fall no the cost of equity will increase the weighted as see as as you are you are you are uh, gearing will increase is it right as gearing will increase the weighted average cost of capital will decrease is it it will not rise it will decrease so this is also false and this is also Okay. No. See, this is where it says, where what is which two of the following? Okay, which two of the following are most likely to result? Company financial gear. See, when when we'll have low taxable profits, fine. You see what happens here keep it in mind this is what i said if if there is a if we are how much is there tax rate is how much 20 percent then if that see when you are taking more debt debt is more tax is less okay debt is more tax amount okay tax amount is less is that uh, debt is less tax amount will be more okay 
see that we are we have to always take into consideration the tax rates okay always we have to say how much see the moment see what we the purpose is you have to pay lesser tax okay the purpose is how best you can minimize the tax how we can minimize the tax we can minimize the tax with respect to combination of debt and equity if you, here you have a debt of how much 70 tax 198 here the debt is how much there is no debt we are paying more tax is it the moment see why there is high companies financial getting being high because what because it's not of low taxable profit because of its high tax rates yeah, if you the moment there is a tax as is, is there you take the debt is it right you increase the debt the tax amount will be less here i have given you a very very direct example of this is that very direct example in expense expensive share cost is in a share issue share cost is not uh, never be inexpensive there will be a there will be a issuing cost will be there is it right there will be a issuing cost will be there is that it's not like uh, fine and intangible assets being low proportion of total see whenever you uh, you approach for a loan okay whenever you approach for a loan they will see two things one they will see profits and one they will see the assets that is the reason when we are talking about gearing is it right when you are talking about the gearing what we'll do we'll say debt divided by equity is it right when you are uh, when you are talking about the leverage is it right when you are talking about the leverage debt divided by debt plus equity when you say this it's nothing but they are we are very much focused on what assets assets also we are talking in terms of what we are talking about tangible assets intangible assets it's see intangible assets will be wiped out is it right if the moment there is a losses a lot of profits are decreasing it will have Im the immediate impact will be on the intangible intangible assets are being low proportion of means they want ta total intangible assets should be low tangible assets should be more fine these are the these are the some of the uh, some of the basic factors which will result in companies financial gearing being very very if you have see if you have good, good tangible assets definitely anybody will come and come forward to give us the loan as such compared to ordinary secured loans see one we say ordinary ordinary secured loans and which of the following statement is true when considering see you are you are what you are doing you are talking about ordinary secured loans and we are talking in terms of convertibles convertible secured loans see what is the difference between these two convertible means we are can convert it into equity and when we are convert convertible this is option there is no precondition is it there is no precondition fine no when we do the things what they say likely to be more expensive to service because of the the, the, it's it's as simple as that as simple as that because see there is there is we service is nothing but in terms of payment of interest okay it's not more expensive as as such is that the this there's no risk um, risk imposed on that there is no mandatory that you have to convert into equity i told you in the big now just now it is only an optional is it right it is only an option when it is an optional it is we are not going to 
we are not going to impose yeah, impose impose we are not no, not going to not going to impose risk on the on the equity there, there is no equity component is is not a risk on the holders is there is there is no hard and fast rule that you have to convert it into equity likely to be less expensive to service because of see what happens see we, see everybody is expecting is it right everybody expect that you should have you convert it into see she, it is a high risk but it gives there are both benefits and uh, uh, positive things and negative things is right when we are talking in terms of the convertible convertible is an optional hope it's optional is it we can we, whereas ordinary secured loans is not having an option likely to be less expensive see what happens if you go for a new issue is it right if you go for a new issue there will be expenses attached to that but if you are you are converting the existing Uh, secured loans into and uh, into equity component it is less expensive okay Le let's say now likely to be more expensive sir, because converting to equity requires holder to have additional payments no we are not going to have any additional payments okay no additional payments If we are we are directly converting the amount to amount okay no additional payments be very clear about the explanations okay next likely to be less expensive to sir because they must rank after ordinary loan stock is it there you should not see there is as simple as that there is, is no having a, a ranking is it right if they rank it is it if ranking ranking is is applied is it right is applied it will be more expensive is it if ranking is applied is it it will be more expensive then we we will, we will have to put it in a sequential order and subsequently it has to be Uh, it has to be given that treatment is that it? it is not uh, if there is a ranking it will be more expensive the answer is what the answer is b which of the following statements modi glani miller see please please go through this theory again and again very very important okay very important we we have to be very clear see when you are talking about this theory you have to think about perfect capital markets imperfect capital markets dividend growth model okay all the things has to be there assumptions assumptions we i will cover this in detail some, somewhere down the line okay I, i will cover this in the next few sessions uh, which of the following is the best statement of the conclusion of all shareholders are indifferent between receiving dividend income and capital gain is it in the perfect market they are saying in uh, uh, which of the following best conclusion of modi on the relevance of dividend policy is it if we take into consideration all shareholders are indifferent between the the uh, uh, receiving dividend income and capital gain see if it is a, if we are assuming is it right if you are assuming perfect markets indifferent means is it indifferent means miss the, the expectations is it right if you are assuming the perfect markets if exist is it if there exist definitely it is not a conclusion is it we cannot say that 
they are going to be indifferent. There will be a difference, okay? There will be a difference between receiving the dividends and see everybody will be will be have different expectations, is it right? Every investor will have a different expectations and they have a different planning, okay? So it will not be a right, correct statement, best statement. It's not, no, I'm not saying correct statement, it is not the best statement. We have to, we have to make sure that, see, this is the way we have to be very clear. Very thin margin will be there between right and wrong also. Increase in retention results in higher growth. Is it? Increase, see, when, see, it is when, it is, see, when it is retain earnings. Retention is nothing but retain earnings. When it is retain earnings, is it right? When a increase in results in retain earnings, what will happen? Uh, uh, increase in retention will have uh, will be reinvested. Is it? Will be reinvested. It 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 it, it talks about which type of model. It talks about it it you if you have covered this. Again, we will cover this in detail. Is that just I'm giving you a, a overview about this? Is that it is a one? There is one model is called as a Gordon Gordon growth model. Is it? This is with yeah, respect to the Gordon. Fine. Now, discounting the dividends is not appropriate word. The entire financial management is based on time value of money. The entire financial management is talks about present values. Is it? It, it talks about it's not an appropriate EAC. Discounting is part of the system. Is it? The discounting is the part. You cannot say it is not the appropriate. Everywhere we discount it. Is it right? The, the it contradicts the it contradicts the dividend valuation model the value of shareholders equity is determined solely by firms investment selection criteria yes if the what what is what will happen if you are re, if you are retaining the funds is it the retain earnings increases is it the retain earnings increases what will happen the value of the market share value will also increase. A company, a company, very well, see, now you are coming to really the core concepts of financial. We are, if you take into consideration, we are at the fag end of the uh, subject, is it? A company is going to take on a project using a mix of equity and debt in an economy where the corporation tax is 30%. Assuming perfect markets other than tax, okay, other than tax, which of the following is true? Beta of equity means cost of beta of equity is that is always greater than beta of assets. Always beta of equity, the that change in the value of equity, the risk of the equity, is it right? Always the beta of equity will be greater than beta of the asset. This is the first condition. Next, weighted cost of capital will be less than cost of equity. Is that always weighted cost of capital will be less than weighted cost of capital is nothing but it is a combination of cost of debt after tax plus cost of equity. Is that weighted average cost of capital? What is the formula if you take weight of equity into cost of equity plus weight of debt in times cost of debt after tax? Always it will be less. Okay. Weighted as cost of capital is less than cost of equity calculated. Definitely weighted as cost is always the calculated cost of equity. Is it? This is right. We'll see. We'll see other things also. Beta of equity is less than beta of. It will never be less. 
it will never be more is it right here also this is all these are wrong is it 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 will is it fine it will never be beta of equity no is it beta of equity yeah beta of equity here beta of equity is greater than beta of assets weighted coverage cost of capital this is also right this is also right but weighted average cost of capital is not greater than it will be less than beta of equity is no it is less than weighted of capital is is it is it has to be less is it right whereas weighted it is right right now if a company that currently if a company that currently pays work for work force on a piece rate system is it if the company uh, piece rate system means variable cost is it right it means variable cost fine uh, to automate its production line, which of the following see when you, you when you are see when you are paying on a fixed cost cost will increase is it right variable cost piece rate system as per the requirement it will change is it right as per the requirements will change whereas fixed cost fixed cost is what fixed cost is the salaries component is it right? fixed cost is the depreciation component is it right? fixed cost with the depreciation variable cost is uh, the variable piece rate system uh, to automate production which of the following response will expect to operating gearing operating gearing is nothing but fixed cost divided by variable cost is that automatically variable cost will decrease 100 divided by 75 is it right 100 divided by 75 it comes to almost 0 0.75 if variable cost decreases is it right if uh, fix, if if we are going to say that uh, 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 the fixed cost will would increase and variable cost will decrease is that what will happen see the things uh, if it is 100 divided by 50 it comes to 0 0.5 if there is a piece rate system is it if there is a uh, piece rate system where automate the production line which of the it is expect to the operating leverage what will happen see if, if there is a piece rate system where its workforce is it? what will assume you are you are you are fixed cost will increase okay and variable cost will remain same is it we have fixed cost will increase and variable cost will remain same what will happen uh, the the operating leverage will also increases it means that when we are saying it is means the, uh, the fixed uh, the proportion of fixed cost with the variable cost how it will have impact on the it will not decrease it will not remain same it will not increase or decrease it will not be plus or minus it will have an impact on increase if a geared company asset beta is used for cap m formula rf plus beta into a what is what is rj it is uh, uh, if the ungeared company geared means what you will have debt plus equity is it right yeah. RJ is nothing but see R he, here what is it if it is uh, B uh, beta of J means beta of equity is it right beta of equity now we when we are talking about uh, is it when we are talking in terms of what asset beta if a geared company asset beta is used is it right in a in a geared company asset beta used in the cap m formula is it right in cap m formula 
what say what is the rj then see what happens there are two things is that one there is a one there is a gate cost of equity is it a one there is a ungeared cost of equity is it no when you are using asset beta is it right? when you are using asset beta is used when we are using a ungeared cost of equity whenever we are we are using if if a gate company asset beta is used it is it is used for what in capm formula we are we want we wish to calculate the cost of equity with respect to the ungeared one is it it is not see weighted cost of capital weighted cost of cap uh, uh, weighted cost of capital is you know uh, weight of equity into cost of equity is it right? weight of equity into cost of equity plus weight of debt into cost of debt after tax okay this is the formula gear cost of equity is the cap m okay gear the cost of equity is the cap m market premium is rm minus rf answer is which of the following does not directly affect company's cost of equity fine which which uh, is not going to affect the company's cost of equity expected market return is it right company's cost of equity Expe return on assets return on assets this is expected market return rm this is rf this is beta what is the formula for cap m rf plus beta into rm minus r answer is a all this will get affect which of the following ratio is a measure of company's liquidity is it which one is the measure of company's liquidity what liquid what is the liquidity ratio current assets divided by current interest coverage ratio we are not going to gross profit is not belongs to liquidity return on capital employed is not belongs to liquidity and an, an analyst gathered the following data about the company okay an analyst for fill the gaps the current liabilities total working capital capital expenditure total assets cash flow from operations fill the fill in the gaps in the statement below if the company will write that current ratio will be 2 it could dash current assets by 100 or dash current liabilities by whether we should increase or we should decrease now what is the what is the current ratio current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities we have current liabilities is 300 okay uh, current assets and we don't have total debt working capital is there 200 is it working capital is how much 200 working capital is 200 what is the formula for working capital current assets minus current liabilities if you take current liabilities as 300 current assets will be how much the missing value it is 500 500 minus 300 it will become how much 200 fine this is the question mark and now is that what they say it is good. if you put 500 here is it if you put 500 here what will happen 500 500 divided by 300 it comes to 1.6 that we want current ratio should be 2 okay current ratio should be 2 is it right in order to current ratio will be 
we will take 300 as it is, isn't it? In order to make it 2, what we have to do? Uh, either we should add, we should add 100 to this, isn't it? 500, it will become 600 by 300, it will become how much? 2, means uh, it could increase current assets by 100, is it right? It can increase current assets by 100 or or what happens take 500 as current assets is it right you decrease current liabilities by 50 is it right 500 divided by 250 it will become how much means it could decrease in relation to preferentiates as a source of capital for the company Fill in the gaps below to complete the preference shares are the form of uh, form of uh, how we best we can describe preference shares. Preference shares is a form of an equity capital which will ca carry risk from the point of view of the high high uh, of the ordinary shareholders, is it right? Which will ca see it, it will ca see preference shareholders is see what happens first will be debt then will be preference shares, then will be equity. The risk will be higher than the equity. Fine. Now, what is the, what is the dividend cover ratio measure of? Is it right? What is the dividend cover ratio measure of? Dividend cover ratio uh, is uh, uh, if you take into consideration earning per share divided by dividend per share or net income divided by dividends paid. How many times company earnings could be paid to dividends? The interest of coupon rate expressed, no. The interest of coupon rate is not related to the dividend. The return on the investor by taking dividend income and capital growth, no. How much of the overall dividend payout to individuals are entitled to? Fine. Uh, uh, the Interest or coupon rate expressed in terms of percentage of market price. Is that right? this is with respect to what? This is with respect to return on investment for debt holders. Is that right? This is uh, this is uh, this is with respect to what it is the shareholders returns ratio. And uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, the overall dividend payout to India. This is the dividend per share. The right answer is. In relation to long term lease, which of the following statements are true in terms of lease? This is, see, this is entirely a, 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 a point where we have to have more discussion on that. Okay, we will we'll have more discussion on that. The lease agreement cannot be, can, once you are taking the lease, the lease cannot be transferred. This is true. Many leases can be offered in sequence to cover the whole. No, we cannot offer many leases. It is only a one lease. The lesser return the risk. No, it is not the lesser. It is the lessee. Is it? It is false. The lessee is responsible for maintenance. This is true. In relation to irredeemable security paying, in redeemable security being a fixed rate of return, which of the following statements is correct? 
as risk rises the market value of security will fall to ensure that the receive a increase yield see if the value of r increases the present value will decrease if see when the present value will decrease the investors will expect a higher yield this is the rule which we have to we have to always remember as risk arises the market value of security will fall to ensure as risk rises the market value of the security fall and an investor will never see uh, you you have uh, risk is uh, the risk is increasing your expectations will also increases you have you are, you you have more expectations for return this is not right okay as risk rises the market value of the risk will also rise no as r increases the present value will decrease as risk rises the market value of the risk will rise no the on correct answer is this Dermin has five million fifty nominal value of ordinary shares in issue. It recently announced one for four rights at six per share. Its share price on the announcement of right issue was eight. Per. What is the theoretical value of right per existing share? Is it right? What is the value of right? We have to take into consideration value of right. Is that what is the value of right? How many shares are there before it has been issued? Five million shares. Okay, five million shares. What is the rights? Uh, five five million. Five million. Is it right? Five million. Is it right? Uh, uh, number of shares. N equal to how much? Five million divided by zero point five. Ten million shares. Okay, ten million shares. What is the value of ten million shares at the rate of A? It comes to eighty. How many rights are there? How many rights are there? They are giving for ten million one share. For four shares, they will give one share. Is it right? Divided by four, two point five million shares times. What is the value of the shares? Six. It comes to fifteen. Million. Is it total comes to ninety five million? Is it this is the total value? Total value. Is it a theoretical x theoretical value of right? Is is total value? Is it a total value divided by total? Number of shares. Okay, total value. This is shortest formula. How much is the total value? Ninety-five divided by how many shares are there? Ten million plus two point five. Is it right? two point five shares? Okay, it comes to ninety-five million divided by twelve point five million shares. It comes to how much? Ninety-five divided by twelve point five, it comes to. Is it right? It comes to how much? Seven point six. Now you see the things. Is that this is the theoretical x price? Is it right? Theoretical x price. What they are asking us? They are asking us what is the, the value of right per existing share? Is it right? Means uh, you 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 have how much? Uh, the total per share value is how much? Per share value is per share value is seven point six. Is that right? How much the issue uh, rights issue? Rights issue is how much? Rights issue is uh, six. Is that right? Right issue is six. What is the difference? We'll get difference is this is the 
this is the value for each right issue how much is number of shares they are issuing for four issues they are issuing one share divided by divided by four shares it comes to 0. Point, it comes to 0. 0.40 Again, I will explain you the the total value of the right is how much, the value of the shares are how much? Tell, uh, uh, Eighty, okay. Uh, rights is how much? Two point five million. Fifteen. Total value is ninety five. If you take that ninety five into total number of shares are how much? Twelve point seven point six. From the seven point six, you have we have to we have to we have to deduct the uh, value of the uh, rights ratio. Six. Difference will become how much? This is the difference. Difference divided by number of uh, for a, how many shares they are issuing. For every four shares, they will issue one share. Means the value of one share will be how much? Zero point. Small and medium man, uh, size enterprise can have difficulty raising finance due to the maturity gap. Which of, of the what is what is the mature? See, there are two things. One, there is a maturity gap. One, there is a maturity gap. The second one is funding gap. Is it right? You, means see what you have to see. Maturity gap is. You have to match long, long term, long term requirements. Is it right? Long term requirements with long term finance. Is it long term requirements with long term, long term finance? Short term, short term requirements with short term finance. If you mismatch it, then it is going to be called as a maturity gap. The lack of for available funds for the shareholders is it the lack of uh, the lack of funds available for the shareholders uh, we will see it's it's, uh, it's almost in a funding gap but it is not related to much venture capitalists need an exit route for the investment no we are not talking about any exit route the business find difficult to obtain short term financing but easier to obtain long term financing is current this is where the maturity gap you have to, what we have to match match with short term with short term long term with long term if you are finding difficulty with the the duration then it is going to be called as a maturity gap as such First is planning for one for four rights issue with an issue price of 10% discount to the current market. The EPS is how much? 50. And the shares are trading at price earning ratio of 20 times. The market capitalization is 50 million. Fine. Now. Uh, uh, yes, EPS is how much? EPS is EPS is uh, fifty point five zero. Price earning ratio is how much? Twenty times. Fine. Little bit. We have to be very very careful here. Okay. First, you have to take what? You have to take current market price. Current market price is EPS times price earning ratio. EPS is 0 0.05, price ratio is 20, it comes to how much? The current market price is 10 per share. Fine. Next. The market capitalization is 50%. EPS first is planning for 1 for 4 right issue with a issue price of 10% discount. Okay. Rights issue price rights issue price issue price 10 percent discount is it a 10 percent discount means means 10 1 minus 0 0.10 it comes to how much nine per share 
is it now we have we have to how many shares are there see number of shares are how much number of shares are number of shares are how what is the value 15 million 50 million what is the value per share 10 okay this is 50 million this is 10 it comes to how much it comes to how many shares 5 million shares number of shares to be issued number of shares to be issued how much they are saying that four for one for four is it right one for four means five million shares divided by four uh, divided by four is it at 1.25 million shares theoretical theoretical uh, x rights price is it at existing how much five million shares five million is it a exiting 5 million what is the value value is 10 per share okay this is 10 per share 10 per share okay uh, plus how many new shares they are issuing 1.25 is it right 1.25 at what price they are issuing they are issuing at the price of 9 per share is it right 9 per share divided by is that divided by total number of shares are how much 5 million shares plus 1.25 million shares it comes to how much it comes to uh, it comes to 50 million plus 1.25 times 9 is it right 11.25 divided by 6.25 million shares this is dollars okay dollars 61.25 divided by 6.25 is it right it comes to how much it comes to It comes to 9.8. Okay. Select the correct term to complete the small and medium enterprises size entities are restricted access to capital markets. The difference between finance required and the amount of is it right? this is nothing but if they give finance it is nothing but funding gap we don't have any forecasted gap okay we don't have any asset gap maturity gap in terms of time funding gap in terms of finance Green company, a listed company, has the following share prices during the period. At the start of the period, 2.5, highest 3.5, lowest 2.5. Yeah. See, this is P0, this is P1. They have paid a dividend of how much? This is, they have paid dividends of D0. Is it right? Now, total shareholders return. P1 minus P0 plus D1. You put it as a D1. Okay. Divided by P0. How much is there? 3.0 minus 3 minus 2.5 plus 0. Dividend is how much? 0 0.15 divided by 2.5. It time equal to 0 0.26 or 26 percent.
Scrap has announced that it will pay an annual dividend equal to 55% of the earnings. Its earnings per share is how much? 80 and has 10 million shares in issue. The return on equity is how much? 20% and current come dividend is how much? 4.6. What is the cost of equity? Is it? What is the cost of equity formula? Cost of equity is D1, D1 by, uh, by P0 plus G or D0 1 plus G divided by P0 plus G. Fine. Now, dividends. How much they are paying dividends? They are paying, they say that 55% equal to 55 percent of earnings okay one by one dividends is it dividends to be paid okay dividends to be paid 55 percent of the earnings is it how much is the earnings 0 0.8 0 0.55 is it right 0 0.8 times 0 0.55 it comes to how much it comes to 0 0.4 4 per share is right retention retention how much is the growth yeah, in order to calculate growth we should know retention okay retention ratio is how much retention ratio is uh, they are paying how much 1 minus dividend payout ratio is it right 1 minus dividend payout ratio So 1 minus 0 0.55 it called retention is how much 0 0.45 okay or 45 percent growth dividend growth is it a dividend growth is it right how much is the uh, 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 how much is the uh, they say uh, the return on equity is how much? Return on equity is uh, uh, twenty percent. Is it right? The return on equity is retention, retention ratio times retention ratio times return on equity. Is it right? Retention ratio times return on zero point four five times zero point two. 0 0.09 or 9 percent. Is it right? P? P0. We have to know P0. Is it right? We have we, we, now we got growth. We got this is the growth we have. Is it right? This is the growth we have. Uh, this is the dividend paid we have. Is it right? This is the dividend paid we have. We have we have to know PO price of. Is it right? Price. They said that uh, there is a cu current come dividend. We have to remove dividend. Is it right? We have to current come dividend. Current come dividend minus dividends. It will become P0. Okay. It will become P0. How much is there? 4.60 minus 4.60 minus how much you are paying dividends? 44 okay it comes to 4.16 is it 4.16 now you apply the formula okay now you apply the formula how much is there yeah, is apply the formula ke equal to ke equal to how much is there uh, dividends is how much dividends is 0 0.44 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 4.16 plus 0 0.09 okay if you take that into consideration it comes to how much 0.44 times 1.09 is that 0 0.4796 divided by 4.16 plus 0 0.09 divided by 4.16 plus 0 0.09 it comes to it comes to 0 0.2052 or 
20.52 percent answer is okay this is a comprehensive one for the the second part is a business finance and valuation you, you you just go through it and if you find uh, any doubt just post it in the comment section i will uh, i will give a required uh, explanation as needed okay please subscribe to this channel share this channel and uh, post your comments and uh, if you find really worth uh, i wish that you like this channel okay thank you so much best of luck